Welcome to Social Studies Samurai. In this video, we'll show you how to create a great pre-unit formative assessment so you get a sense of where your students are and can take them where they need to be using Google Forms quizzes. We'll also show you how to add immediate feedback so students know where they are and have agency over their learning. And we'll also show you how to add external links to YouTube and websites. So what does this look like for the user? Uh, they've got the uh, explanation here on what to do and it's got uh, attribution for all the images. I've gone ahead and pre-filled this and they have a series of different question styles. I've also collected their name and as they fill in the form, they do notice again, the images have attribution and they go down and when they finish checking off all the boxes and submitting their answers, they submit the form. So then they get this button that says view score. This is where the magic happens. They click view score. So students get this pop-up window and they also get their grade. This is zero out of zero because it's formative and I want them to focus on the content, not the grade. As they scroll down, they see correct responses in green, but I also give them extended feedback that gives them context as to why the response was correct. I've also added a short YouTube video and a short reading from an external website just to give them even more context. And they can go back to this throughout the unit at any time because they've been emailed their responses. As they continue to scroll, any incorrect responses are highlighted in red with the correct response highlighted in green. Again, I give them feedback and that explains to them why their response was incorrect. Now a little hint. What I do is always cut and paste the same feedback for a correct or incorrect response. And that's simply because the answer is always going to be the same. I only change the beginning to say, yes, that's right. Or whoopsie, that's not quite it. They can continue to go through and they can see where they were correct or incorrect in the other responses. Note my images all have Creative Commons attribution. And since this has been emailed to them, they can check back through their email at any time they want to review. And again, when you do the quiz before the uh, unit test you're gonna give, so they can see how much they've learned and see what they have to focus on before they write a test or a quiz. So, how do you make this? So you're ready to create your forms quiz. Here's some things you might wanna think about before you begin. For a pre-unit assessment activity, you wanna get a sense of what they know and what they don't know in the unit. That allows you to modify your unit accordingly so that students can, can succeed and you can get them to where they need to be. Definitely put feedback in the answer key. Take the time to do that because it gives more context to why students got a, an answer correct or incorrect. That gives them agency and it helps them to focus on what they need to learn as they go through the unit. Prepare your text, prepare your images, any video, external websites, Put this all in a Google Doc before you create your form, because then it's going to go a lot faster. Include citations, please include citations. We as teachers have to model for students, so let's give credit where it's deserved. Definitely run a test. Log out of your account, try the form, see that it works. When you use it as the user, you're going to see the mistakes that are in the, uh, in the quiz. And of course, repeat. Do the quiz again at the end of your unit, that way students uh, can see how much they've learned. That builds confidence and, uh, and it really does put meaning to having the pre-unit quiz and the post-unit quiz. And as a reminder, see that it were, put all of your information, your, your questions and whatnot into a Google Doc. That way all you have to do is copy and paste into the Google form, it goes much faster. So the first thing you want to do is access Google Forms. You can do that by clicking your Apps Launcher and then choosing Drive. Once you're in Drive, you want to go to your New button. Click on that. Go down to where it says More. Just keep kind of mousing over with those little arrows and choose Blank Form. Another way you can access Google Forms is to add a new tab. Type forms.google.com and it'll open up the forms page and then all you have to do is click the plus button here and open a new form. 
So how did I put this together? I go up to my settings gear wheel, I tap on it. Under the general tab, I collect email addresses, I check off response receipts, and I also choose always so that I know they will get an email with their responses that they can refer back to at any time they want if they correctly put their email address in. In the presentation tab, I always give them a confirmation message, something positive saying, let's keep focusing. This is very important. The quizzes tab, you have to slide here to make this a quiz. That allows you to assign point values. If you want to go and change grades later, then I would say choose later after manual, but that's only for a graded quiz. For formative, I check immediately after each submission, and that way they instantly can get their feedback, which I have typed in. Don't forget to click save. A few more things about the setup would be going to your customized theme. You might want to tap on your palette, which is going to allow you to change the colors, change your fonts, or if you want, you can upload an image. You cannot upload a URL image. It's got to be an image upload or choose one of the ones they have for you prepared in Google Forms. Then you're going to want to give your quiz an appropriate title and instructions on how to fill out the quiz or the purpose of it. Remember to put your Creative Commons image attribution if you haven't used one from Google. Now I want to add the student's name, so I have a name to go with the email. So I simply click Add Question in my bar on the right, and I just say, please give your name. I make this a required question because I definitely want them to answer it. It's automatically given me short answer as the style of question, and I don't need the answer key. You might want to add a class section as well, and remember, make that a required question. Now I want to add my first content question, so I go back and click Add Question. I'm going to copy and paste in my question. So I've added my question and my responses. Maybe you want to add an image to that. I'm going to make it a required question. And now the magic is here in the Answer key. So I tap on the Answer key, and then I simply choose the correct answer. If there's more than one correct answer, you can actually do that. I'm not going to have a point value because it's formative. I also want to give answer feedback. So for my incorrect answers, I'll write something playful and paste my response there. And for my correct answers, I'll do the same thing. And with the same feedback. I want to add a little more context. So for my correct answers, I'm going to put a YouTube video simply by clicking my YouTube tab, paste the URL, and select it. I have to click Save, but I want to add a link to National Geographic. So I click Link, paste the link, type the text, and I have to click Add for this one. And then I click Save. Now when I go back, I'll see that my feedback for correct answers has those two links but not my incorrect feedback. So I'm going to click Edit, and I'm going to go back and do the same thing. So now that I see my feedback is the same with that one difference at the start, and I've got my links embedded. I click Done, and now it's time to move on to the next question, and the next, and the next, and the next. And then really, you just have to go up to Send, and choose your option for sharing it with your students, embedding it, sending a link, or emailing it directly. If you want to make a copy of your quiz later, click on the dots in the top right and just choose Make a Copy. This is also where you can add other teachers to collaborate with you. So, you want to see how the students did? You do this by going back into the place where you built your form, click on the Responses tab, scroll down, and you'll get a summary of how the class did. And in green you'll see the correct responses, and in gray you'll see how many got incorrect responses. So I can see here, for question four, everybody got it wrong. I better focus on that. You can also look at the responses question by question. Click the question tab. Click your arrows to get to the question you want to look at. Scroll down and then get a sense of how the students did.
You can also look at the individual responses by clicking the individual tab. Choose the student that you want to look at. And then you can scroll down to that individual student's responses and get a sense of where each individual student has understanding and does not. When you finish the quiz, you might want to click the slider to not accepting responses. That way nobody else can take the quiz. And when you're finished with the three dots up here, you can do a range of things. Download into a spreadsheet, get notifications for new responses, or delete them all if you want. And some more magic, you can create a spreadsheet by clicking on the Spreadsheet tab. And you can create a new one or put it into an existing spreadsheet that you already have. Now when you have your spreadsheet, you can see that I have no scores here because it's formative, but I can look at all the responses of my students and format my spreadsheet in any way I choose. Thanks for watching the video. If you're a student or a teacher in subjects like history, geography, government, economics, check out some of the other videos. The mission of this channel is to help students build skills and teachers build their toolkit. So go ahead and subscribe to the channel. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and on the web at socialstudiesamurai.com. Hope to see you again.